Hey guys, I'm back. I know, it's been a long time since I did one of these. And I wanted to hold off because I actually wanted to do a review of Digimon Adventure 2020. And I'm sorry it's not heavily edited, but in all honesty, I don't really trust Toei. To be honest, I don't like using Toei footage. I just feel like I'm more likely to have problems if I do something with Toei, especially with something as new as the Digimon episodes, because they're clearly taking that seriously. And the reason I want to talk about Digimon specifically, why I'm coming back with something as stupid and old as Digimon, is really quite simple. I like Digimon, I have, I have reviewed most of Try, and to be completely honest with you, I am not a fan of Digimon Adventure 2020. I'm not. Now, of course, don't get me wrong, that first episode looks fantastic, and as of the recording of this video, episode 2 has yet to come out. But to be honest with you, while the first episode looked fantastic, it echoed the problem I've had with Digimon really since I saw Frontier's English dub. Even when I was younger, I had this problem, even if I couldn't really articulate it at the time. Now, this is the problem here, okay? This is the problem with Digimon really since Frontier. The two main male rival thing. Because for me, the strength of Adventure, Tamers, and O2, the original Adventure at least, was its wide and varied cast of characters and seeing all these characters develop throughout the story. It was a very character driven story, and I think for the type of thing it was trying to be, it worked really well. And for me, that's kind of why I ended up liking it. And this is the problem here. This is the real problem I have with uh, Digimon Adventure 2020 and all of this. Is that starting with Frontier, we started seeing Takunya and the other main guy whose name I honestly do not remember. I did not re-watch Frontier in preparation for this video. Koji. Takunya and Koji became the two most important players by the end of the show. There were Goku, Vegeta, and Naruto Sake. The problem with that is that those shows are Ashton Shonen's. That that's really the genre. There are two rivals, power-ups, and that's the genre. But with Digimon, I felt that the constant focus on Takuya and Koji really weakened the show. Especially as it went on, and at the end, like, they were both... Everybody else was lending them power, and they were the only people that could do anything. I didn't like it. We then saw that really again with Savers. Even with Savers, or Data Flawed, as it is known in the West, is... Even though it wasn't to that extent, there was still a heavy focus on Marcus and Thomas. I didn't watch Savers in Japanese, so I don't know. I know it happened to be called Savers, and I've just memorized that. But yeah, there's this heavy focus on Marcus and Thomas that I never liked, um, and on their relationship that is very much that rivalry, and they really take a front seat to the other characters, even Yosh Yoshino, who... She's pretty prominent, but they really step above everybody else. And it's not even a, unlike with most shonen, it's not a gender thing. It's just these two lead characters that are rivals are way above everybody else in importance, and I don't like it. And this can be seen, I didn't see Exo Wars or Quark Wars, whatever it's called, but from what I understand, there was no real group in those shows. And then we get to try. Where I was immediately, when I first saw the first episode of Try, I was thrilled. Because I saw everybody did something. We got, we followed Tai, he's our main character, or Tai Chi. But everybody played a role, and then it ended with Omnimon. And I was like, okay, or Omega Mon, or Omnimon, whatever. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Whatever. Tai and Yamato, or Tai and Matt, they get their moment. And then it happens again. And again. And it's constantly relying on Omnimon and Tai and Yamato or Matt. And it's sure the other get transformations and they power up. But at the end of the day, there's the extreme Tai and Matt focus. And away from the group and not really working on all the individual characters. And then apparently, the last Evolution movie that I have not seen, obviously, because of the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the screenings of that in the U.S. were cancelled. I don't know when I'll get to see that movie. It may never come out of the U.S. in theater. I mean, there is a dub, from what I understand. I'll watch it when I can see it, either sub or dub. I watched all try dubs. I don't care. Even though I grew up with the English dub, I don't care. I'll watch it either. But for me, it's just really, really 
annoying is because I turned on that episode and I noticed one thing. Even when you're replicating the original butterfly intro from the original Japanese version, you only see Tai going into the digital world. You don't see the rest of the cast. The intro is predominantly Tai. The ending is predominantly Matt. And some people have said maybe they'll change it per episode. I don't think that's likely. Solely on the grounds of b cost and budget for that. Uh, these openings are a lot of work. These are intros. These are high quality productions. And the time and money that will be put into making like 8 versions. If one thing in a show like Naruto. If you were saying maybe they'll have like a different version. I know in the first uh, second arc of Naruto. Of Boruto was coming out. Uh, the Sardo T arc was coming out. People were saying. Maybe they'll edit the opening to have, like, replace Naruto with Sakura and the shot would all be adult. You know, put Sasuke in it, replace the shot of Boruto leaving his house with Sarada leaving your house. That's all very doable, but you'd only be doing it with Sarada. And people said maybe in one arc they'd do it with Miski. Like, that would have been fine. It's three characters. It's just three versions of the OP. And you could likely keep a lot of the shots the same. You're talking about basically reworking mo most of the opening to fit a different character. That would basically mean making eight versions of the same opening that are drastically different. At least in the actual animation. Even if not in the storyboarding. But, I don't think that's likely And Looking at it, first of all, they seem to be doing our war game, like, right away. Which is stupid, because... Our war game is a movie plotline. Like, I understand the reworking thing, but to me it's like they're jumping into these things. It's like during Try, they picked out the specific things that people like, like Omnimon. And now they're like, are we doing Omnimon? Are we really doing Omnimon on the second episode? We already did Greymon in episode one. It's just, I don't, the pacing is just too fast. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The show looks fantastic. Digimon Adventure 2020 looks good. The animation is fantastic. Anime AJ did a great video that you can look up. Just type in Anime AJ Digimon. It's one of the best videos in the world. It's fantastic. It breaks down why it's so good. Episode 2 looks like it's looking. And at the time this is up, it's probably already out. It probably looks fantastic. I hear nothing but great things about the animation staff. The production schedule. It's all really good. And that many people are comparing it to Snooper. Because that is. It's a reboot of something that was going on around the time of Dragon Ball. Or the 90s. And it's just mind-blowing the difference in production. Now... I'm not sure why, I'm not going to get into the difference between Dragon Ball Super and Digimon Adventure Try or Digimon Adventure 2020, but there's a clear difference between Try and uh, Super and this. Because this looks fantastic. As does apparently the movies. Toei Animation has been really treating Digimon with a lot of respect recently, which is odd because they kind of ignored it for like a couple of years. But no. I like it. it. looks good. The character acting is fine. The dialogue is fine. I just personally am not interested in Ty and Matt. I never have been. Ty was cool, but like I was always like, I want to see the rest of the cast. There was, I never really had a character in Digimon that I'm like, I want to show about them. Like, there are characters that I like, but like, I was never like, I want to show about these characters. Which is one of the reasons I didn't like Adventure 2 as much. Because I didn't think I liked as many of the new characters, and TK and Kari, I don't like TK and Kari enough to watch a show about them. I like Hikari, and I like Takunya. Or, not Takunya. I only get TK's Japanese name and Takunya confused. The point is that I like them. They're great. It's that they're two, probably two of my favorites in the Destin. I think they're really interesting. I like I like their dynamic. I like, their, I like the way they interact with the rest of the cast. I think they're crushed. They're cool concepts. I like them. I like their roles in Adventure, the original. But, if I'm being completely honest with you, I wouldn't watch the Hikari show, I wouldn't watch the TK show, I wouldn't do that, it's stupid. I don't want to see a Joe show, or a Mimi show, or a Sora show, or a Tai show, or a new Matt show. I think it worked, because it was about a group of people in this world, group the group of kids in this world trying to survive. That's what made it work, and it was also important that the bond with the Digimon developed slowly over time. Now, I have no problem with Tai getting along with, with Agumon right away, but why T Agumon? I get that Agumon has kind of become like the poster child for Digimon, really, but I don't like it. Because uh, he did evolve from Koromon to Agumon right away, which I don't like. 
the, 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 the original, what I liked about it was that it all felt very real. It doesn't feel like a real kid to me. It doesn't. Ty did not feel to me like a normal child. Like, in the original, he was courageous, but it was also felt like a kid. He doesn't feel like a person here. He arrives in a monster world, meets the monster, and it's like, okay. And he discussed it within, within moments. In the original, they were all freaking out, and I, I liked all that more. Now, I like where they're going with it. I think it could go somewhere interesting, but I'm definitely not interested and not happy that it looked like it was going to be the Tai and Yamato show. I don't want that. Some people are saying it'll be an a character every episode, but the opening and the ending don't really say and hint toward that being what this is. It seems to be more than just this is the Tai and Yamato show. I mean, but one character, it's a little bit like Naruto. One character gets predominantly the opening, or they share the opening, but mainly predominantly opening tie, and predominantly opening, predominantly for the ending is Matt. And yeah, I'm just, it looks good. It's a good, I think, production wise and the overall quality is good. I'm just not sure if I'm a fan of the direction they're taking the show, which is fine. That's, that's fine. It, Obviously, this isn't aimed at me. This isn't aimed at making a new group of people like this show. I'm also, I think, uh, most people agree with this, but I don't like the new digital world. I don't like the network. I think because the digital world, while being like a fantasy digital like place, also felt like a world. It was like a fantasy world. This feels way too normal. Now, I am theorizing, like a lot of people, this is more of a data flaw savers thing. Where there's like a more of a digital network like world in between the human world and the digital world. Which is fine, that changes that completely. I'm just not sure, I'm just not feeling it. I don't think it's bad, I don't think it looks bad, I'm just not sure I feel the direction. And yeah, that's really it. I'm sorry that it wasn't edited, I know, but to be completely honest with you, I don't want to risk dealing with copyright. I don't have the time anymore to spend hours upon hours making an incredibly long, well-edited review when it's a company like Toei who will probably strike the video. If I think I can get around it, I will. I'm just worried because this is a new show that they're clearly really on top of. Much like with Dragon Ball, I feel like it will get blocked. I already still have that Avatar video I made uh, like two years ago for Halloween that I put a lot of effort into. It took me like two days to make it. And it, and it got blocked, and it never went up, and I could never get it back. They actually disputed my claim that I had the right to upload it. So, yeah. No. Not gonna happen. I'm not gonna make a video just for it to get blocked or taken down by Toei. I'm not gonna do that. I also don't want to deal with a copyright strike. I want to get back into making these videos, and I can't do that with a strike. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you think of Digimon 2020 in the comments section down below. Uh, next week's video will be on My Hero Academia. It will be about Deku and One for All. And then I think after that, I'll be doing a Batman video on the Batman animated series comic, Batman the Adventure Continue by Paul Dini. That is the plan at the moment. If you have things you want me to talk about, tell me down, down below. I need ideas. Because I've been out of the game for a while and I haven't been thinking about it too much. So give me ideas. I also have a couple other projects that I'm finished that I found the audio for on my hard drive. That I'm, that I'm finishing up editing. You may also see me live streaming soon. Because I have nothing else to do. Also check out my vlog channel down below. Because I may start doing vlogs. I don't know. I've been quarantined for 40 days now. I'm just trying to find stuff to do. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video if you did. I'd like to comment down below. Follow me on Twitter also down below. And above all else. Have a great day.